unknown to you everything I have learned from my Father. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to the crowds, This is what the kingdom of God is like. A man throws seed on the land. Night and day, while he sleeps, when he is awake, the seed is sprouting and growing. How, he does not know. Of its own accord, the land produces first the shoot, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And when the crop is ready, he loses no time. He starts to reap because the harvest has come. He also said, What can we say the kingdom of God is like? What parable can we find for it? It is like a mustard seed, which at the time of its sowing in the soil is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet once it is sown, it grows into the biggest shrub of them all and puts out big branches so that the buds of the air can shelter in the shade. Using many parables like this, he spoke the word to them, so far as they were capable as of understanding it. He would not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything to his disciples when they were alone. The Gospel of the Lord. Although it's not a church celebration, happy Father's Day to all you fathers. You are blessed by being a father. And you know, I I came across something this week that really talks to us about the importance of the leadership that fathers gives us because they have a clarity of mind. They're like a railway track, straight as a die going in one direction. And you know, it's really a good job we have fathers because a wife's brain is different. Just off the coast of Louisiana, there's an island called Ile de Jean Charles. And over recent times, that island has been shrinking. People used to live there, they still, few of them still do, but all the bits that you see all separated were at one time one island. But the ocean is rising and it's gradually eating the island away. The land is getting smaller and smaller. And in fact, some of the inhabitants have had to put their houses on stilts in order to stay on the island. And the government went to great pains to try to relocate these people in drier land. But there were some people who would not move. My home is not for sale. I'm staying put. They're not going anywhere. But you see, the problem is the sea doesn't hear that. The sea's just going to keep on rising. And no matter how determined they are to stay where they are, the sea is going to have the last word. So it would be wise, would you not think, that they prepare for that rather than just to succumb to the inevitable. Sometimes think, That's the way we think in our churches, in our parishes. You know, the world has changed. And the world of religion has changed. And I think sometimes in our parishes, what we want to do is to to pretend that the change is not happening. Just to hold on to what we had. 
even though what we had is gradually being taken away from us. You know, the, the recent census has shown us this. The majority of people in Scotland said that they had no religion in the 2022 census. For the first time, the majority of people had no religion. And we, and we can look at the graph of that. You see that actually the biggest religion in Scotland today is no religion. And the, the bottom bars, the, the kind of uh, turquoise bars, that's 2022. And 2011 is the, the, the dark blue. So you can see the difference between those who had no religion in 2011 compared with 2022. Let's only on, concentrate on the Christian churches. Look what's happening. The Church of Scotland has had a dramatic decline in those who profess to be members of that church. The Roman Catholic Church is in decline. And other Christian churches kind of stay in put, but from a, a low starting point. Our world is changing. And we can sit here and pretend that it's not and wish that people would come to church and wish that somehow this would all change. But the thing is, is it's not going to change until we change. And there is some way that we can go away feeling like this is something to be depressed about. I don't think it's something to be depressed about. I think this is a glorious opportunity for us. We hear in the readings today what God's plan is. And, and they use the image in the first reading from Ezekiel, the image of a tree. And God takes a cutting off the tree. He prunes it. He cuts it back and replants it. And then we're told that the tree just blossoms and grows so as that all the buds of the air and all the animals come and take shelter in it. That's God's plan for us. He wants his church to be a home for everyone. A place where people can come and live in the shelter of God's love from a world where they are struggling, they're looking for answers, they're looking for direction, they're looking for meaning in their life. If we can't give them answers, direction and meaning in, in their lives, who else can? We might be afraid about what we have to do and we might think, that we can't make a difference to this kind of movement. But the gospel tells us the opposite. The gospel says, start small and it will grow. And it will grow into what God wants it to be, a place where all people can come and shelter in God's love. During this week, some delegates from our parish went to Harrogate to a conference really asking the question, where is your parish going? Are you a parish, are we a parish that's like those islanders? We just want things to go away. We just want things to stay as they are. And all that's going to happen there is that year on year, more of you are going to have more grey hair than you already have. And there will be fewer and fewer of us. That's all that's going to happen. Unless we really put our trust in God. One of the things that is absolutely clear in the scripture readings today is this is God's work to bring people to his church. Our task is to make sure we are as open 
and invitational and taking away all the barriers that can prevent people from being part of God's church. It's not our job to convert people. That's the work of God's Holy Spirit. But our job is to proclaim that there is a Holy Spirit, that there is hope, that there is direction, that there is a place of shelter under the wings of God's love. So that has implications for every single one of us because this work of bringing the good news to others is not just the work of the professionals. It's not just my job. It's all of our jobs by virtue of the fact that we've been baptized. We've been filled with God's Holy Spirit. Why? For a purpose. God doesn't pour out all those gifts in our lives for nothing. He expects us to use them. He expects us to be at His service. Only you can touch the people in your life with the good news. I can't do that. I can do it with my, the people in my life. But most of the people in my life are yourselves and my believing friends. But it's your neighbors and your family, your work colleagues, the places that you have leisure with, only you can touch those particular people. Only you can bring God's love to those people. So how do we do that? Because if we're being honest, I think we're all a bit afraid of doing that. I know I'm a bit afraid sometimes to be Christ's witness. You know, I know sometimes I go on the bus with my collar on, but I put my anorak right up so as nobody can see it because I don't want to sit and have conversations with God with the people that sit beside me. I just want to get to my destination. This is hard. This is a hard ask. And it can be frightening. But God has given us the Holy Spirit to do this. He's not left us to our own devices. So I want you to imagine this. I want you to imagine in your life that you are a website. Right? You're a place that people can go to get the information that they need. So you're a website. www.putyournameinn.com that's where people can go to find out the answers that they're looking for. So you're a website. You're a place where God can communicate with others. And this website is special because it's not the World Wide Web that we're talking about here. But it is three W's. And the three W's are this. Witness. You can witness to the love of God by your life. By how you live that love of God. So that people can look at you and think, see whatever they've got, I want a bit of that. Your words speak about your faith. Don't be embarrassed to talk about the fact that you come to church on a Sunday. Invite people to join you. Your words have power. And your works. Be people of service. Be people who see our brothers and sisters in great pain and in great need and come to their aid. Don't walk by. So we can be a website to the world. But absolutely fundamental to this, we can't do 
any of this until we personally surrender our lives to the Holy Spirit. We have to give him control.